Ring, 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 ring. That's right. Bikeaholics, don't ride without the slide. That's right. We are happy to announce we have Bug Slide now in our Law Abiding Biker store, tried and tested by the Law Abiding Biker crew and is our number one go-to motorcycle cleaner now, guys. It cleans, shines, degreases while removing bugs and other surface contaminants with ease. Use it on your motorcycle, car, boat, and more. Never need to wax again. The release agent in Bug Slide contains a UV filter for added protection and dries crystal clear with no yellowing, no buildup, no powdery residue, Robbie. No powdery residue. Perfect. That's right. It's free of abrasives and is safe on all non-porous surfaces, guys. Of course, your paint, chrome, glass, leather, vinyl, all that good stuff. We believed in it so much. That's right. We now carry it in stock right in the Law Abiding Biker store. You can head over to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash store. Check it out. Big Daddy Kane running and heading up the Law Abiding Biker store. He has it right now in stock, ready to ship direct to you. Mm. Mm, What do you say we do this? I got to wet my whistle, Greg. Oh, me too. I'm wetting my whistle. You don't want bugs in your leather slides. Mm. Negatory. That is true. That's right, Bikeaholics. We got a special episode for you. Mm-hmm. We got uh, Robbie here, LD, who hasn't been in the studio for a while. We got a special guest who I'm not going to announce yet. You'll just have to dig in. That's right, guys. This is the podcast for the Motorcycle Majority, the Big MM, also known as the Motorcycle Majority. 99% is what Robbie meant to say. He's rusty. Sorry. (laughs) Starting it out right. That's right, guys. What are you waiting for, Bikeaholics? Mount up. Let us take you on another wild ass ride. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Ryan Erlacher here, your host of the Law Abiding Biker Podcast, and your High tech redneck. Can you guess that voice, bikeaholics out there? I'll let you think about that for a second. Uh, anyways, uh, Robbie, what's up, dude? It has been a minute since you've been in the studio. Glad to have you back. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. Can be a simple Feels so good to play that again, dude. It's been sitting on the soundboard, and I just because everyone likes it. It's a great song. <laughs> Oh, yes, and uh, we do have a special guest in the house, and that is uh, our very first, and Robbie's very familiar, obviously, Robbie's been uh, doing this with me since the very beginning, but our very first patron member of Law Abiding Biker podcast and media, Greg Gaxiola, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Glad to have you, buddy. And uh, we're going to do, we're kind of going to have a free flowing episode here for you guys. And uh, we're going to talk, actually, Greg is is running through on a ride right now. So we want to dig into that a little bit and then uh, kind of talk about a few other things and get his opinion on uh, his thoughts of the studio now that he's visited and the lab garage and, and all that kind of stuff. Robbie, do you have anything off the top of your head to, to hit off here? I'm just happy to be here. Right, right. <laughs> Dude, when was the last episode you did? I don't really know. I don't really have any uh, quality content. I usually just get drunk and throw my two cents in. Correct. I'm here, so. But that's okay. We like having you either way. So this is like a BS episode. I'm perfect for it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's a, a loose episode. So this this is a uh, new free video I want to announce before we get going here, guys. And that's a very popular video that's doing very well. Um, put a lot of time and effort into, effort into it. It is install a seven pin DIN music and communications kit on a 2014 or newer Harley Davidson. That's lawabidingbiker.com. Spell it out. Seven pin install. What that is, guys, to make that easy for you is so your your touring, full touring, ultras, things like that come with a communication seven pin system so you can plug a headset in. Your street glides and road glides that are touring but not full touring, uh, they do not come with that. And so if you want to run a headset such as our Biker Boom headset, half helmet or no helmet headset in the Law Abiding Biker store. If you want to run that bad boy and you got a street glide or road glide, then you're going to need to install the seven pin DIN uh, Harley. It's a part number kit. And of course, that is completely free to you guys. Did you, uh, you're running, uh, Greg, what are you running? You're running the 2014? 2015. Uh, Sorry. Street glide. It's special. the 15 street glide special. Mm-hmm. 
Are you rocking a seven pin den yet or not? No. No, not going to do it. Sorry. All right. No, that's okay. I'm just wondering. I, I couldn't remember. Yeah. Um, so, Greg, welcome. Thank you. And, and it's just great to have you here. Oh, uh, great to be here. What? So, Greg is, I will say this too. So, Greg is first patron um, of Law Abiding Biker Media way back in the day when we started that thing. He got the ball rolling. We went to a trip on California. You've heard Greg uh, on a past episode where we interviewed him via Skype. That was, do you remember the episode number? If not, 97. Oh, look at it. He's prepared. And I did, you didn't have to look at the show notes up there because I was highlighting it. Wow. He he did a little homework on this episode on my couch a little bit ago. I'm not gonna... See, LD. I knew. Uh huh. I LD knew. He said it was required. LD said it was required. Yes. Yeah. Had a boy. I don't ever do my homework, but I give it to him while I eat some ice cream. Watch right. Mariners. And had him give you cliff notes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Moron. <laughs> while I'm driving over there, you tell me uh, what's uh, anything I need to know that looks important. Right. Right. Because I sent those a couple of days ago. We threw this thing together. Greg came in town here, and we knew he was coming. Got a hold of us, and uh, we made it work out. I'm I'm working. I worked all day. I work tomorrow. Robbie worked last night, but by golly, nine thirty at night. Just after work, we're sitting here in the studio. So, Greg, what what is your? Uh, it's your first time in the studio as a first patron in the studio too. So, and the law abiding biker garage, and you made a couple of comments. So, right. give the audience your thoughts on was it what you thought looks like shit, or That's was what it told me? Or, or, or you like who are these ghetto rats? What a dump! <laughs> 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 no, I am absolutely kidding. I am so impressed. This. Ryan Erlicker, there is a reason they call you the high tech redneck. <laughs> and this is it. Just, wow. I'm impressed. Had you, because uh, I don't know what people visit. I have a lot of stuff on the website. What What was your, had you looked at it on, I mean, I know you've done the live events and we got the camera over there, but mm -hmm. but overall, was it similar to what your expectations? Or did you think we were just like, had a mic and a recorder or something? <laughs> I, I just thought you had a camcorder. <laughs> yeah, sweet. With a eight track, uh, you know, cassette deck. Perfect. We could roll that way. That's pretty <laughs> accurate. It, it well, so it is pretty accurate, actually. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, so a lot of stuff up here, and we really have patrons to thank. Over time, it's taken many years, you know, because you yeah. followed us yeah. too, because all the way back to the days of in the closet with the iPad. Right. And a microphone to to this. And really, this yep. stuff is all driven by patrons. I'm glad you've come out of the closet. Yes. Yep. Yes. I have another announcement to make. Uh, no, not going <laughs> to do that. No, never mind. <laughs> oh, so you, we, Greg came over with Robbie. Now uh, you're going to stay with Robbie. We'll talk a little bit about that and get into your trip a little bit here. Um, but got to see the Law Abiding Biker Garage, of course. And we talked a little bit about the night train that's still sitting down there that we right. were trying to sell at one time. Right. Nice bike. It is. Yep. It's a fun little bike. Mm -hmm. um, I need to ride it just to keep it running, but I think we're going to only keep it to do those videos. Like I told you about some handlebar videos and maybe and stuff, but uh, I just tend to, when I'm running errands, jump on that street glide anyways. Although it looks, you know what I mean? Right. It looks cool, but God, I just love my, <laughs> my street glide so much. And I always need the bags and stuff. It's hard to go back to a stripped down bike like that for right. any of my needs. Yeah. I think that w yeah, but, when the weather warms up without the fairing and stuff, you might enjoy taking that once in a while. Yeah. You might want to drop some panties. Oh, that's true. Yes. Yeah. That's I very like accurate. that. That's yeah. one. He snuck it in. Yep. Very Paul good Greg observation. Snuck it in. Very good observation. <laughs> he was just sneaking it in on us right there. I like this. <laughs> so Greg, what, tell us about your, you're rolling through town. You're not from this area. You're from California. And, uh, uh, why don't you tell the audience? I know we met you a little bit. The audience did back in 97, lawbuddingbreaker.com forward slash 97. But why don't you tell them a little bit, you know, what you're willing to disclose. You recently retired. So that's very cool, yep. huh? Yep. March 23rd was my last day on uh, uh, San Nicolas Island out in Channel Island. So I can freely tell you anything you want. Oh, you can now? Place. You've pretty, been freed? Pretty much. Are the feds listening to us right now? They might be. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they might uh, come, come freaking kick the door in on the studio with a federal search warrant for Greg releasing <laughs> information. Now, why don't you tell the audience a little bit? I'm, I'm curious. I've never got to talk to you about this. It's, oh, yeah. Well, LD's got a gun on my head, so I can tell you anything <laughs> you want. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, so what, what, I mean, tell us your, a little well, bit about. It, it's, uh, it's a weapons uh, development facility out there in the middle of nowhere, so. I don't really want to tell you more than that. All right. I might get in trouble. Yeah, I hear you. And you worked there for 
for how many uh, years? I was only there for uh, almost two years. Okay. Yeah. And you, but you worked for them before too, just at a different location, uh, or am I yeah, confused? Yeah, I worked at uh, NAS Lemoore for about uh, two years. All right. And then before that, uh, National Park Service. But I'm retired from uh, 20 years uh, with the Department of Corrections. Correct. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. Okay. And then you led up to that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sweet. And what part of California do you hail from, sir? Hanford. Not, yeah. Not to be confused with the Hanford that's up here. Correct. Because right. you tell people that up here, they're like, yep. huh? We have no nuclear waste in my Hanford. <laughs> <laughs> Except the battered beavers close. There might oh, be yeah. some nuclear oh, waste oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. Some the, waste of some sort. On the pool table, probably. <laughs> yeah. Across the pool table in the bar. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we, 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 You guys, what we're talking about, if you're a new listener and you haven't listened to past episodes, we did a trip down to California That's uh, when we met up with Greg after he'd become a patron and we went to a nice little bar called the Batter, Battered Beaver that we had to visit. What town's that in, Greg? Oaksdale. Oaksdale, that's right. And then we no, stayed. It's actually Oakdale. Oakdale. You say Oaks. Is that okay? <laughs> so I'm the one that screws it up. See, that's pretty typical, Greg. Yeah. Pretty standard around here. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to concur with that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, so you're going, you're, you're on a ride right now. Are you riding your, uh, right your street glide special? Cause no. you got other bikes. What did you I, ride? I'm riding a 1996 Honda Goldwing. I can hear the booze. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear him pulling the driveway when he got there today. <laughs> right? like, hey, start that bike, Greg. He's yeah. like, it's, it's running. No, no, rev it up. No, seriously, rev it up, Greg. <laughs> he had to text me that he was at my house. <laughs> <laughs> I did, too. I'm here, and I'm thinking, oh, shit, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> That's awesome. So Greg hits us up. He's coming through town. And like I say, this is we threw this together. Um, what Now, Rob, you're staying at Robbie's house? Yes. Okay tonight or more than one night or what no just tonight yeah okay so robbie was really nice because i uh i got kids in school in the morning and then work and so you're you're staying at robbie's what time did you get in today pretty early around what um one yeah one. somewhere around there yep okay cool and you guys have been uh what drinking ever since we've been um hanging out <laughs> we went to second street we went to the tap room oh did you <laughs> yeah oh sweet i didn't know that cool yeah. Yeah. so you took him over to second street uh grill yep yeah. okay yep. did you guys yep. eat there no we had it at, at the tap room. okay yep. we ate at the tap room yeah ld had a uh a rather large plate well look at him <laughs> you, you don't Jeez. eat small plates <laughs> wow <laughs> okay yep one for me so what what about this large plate sorry <laughs> oh, I just ordered a plate of food and it was enough for we probably could have each ate off it and filled up and had leftovers where and where was this though the tap room tap room the tap room okay I thought you said the tavern oh the tap room remind oh. me where that's at right next to Jimmy John's on Yak Mav. oh yeah 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 okay I haven't been in there oh it's nice. awesome is it yeah oh yeah yeah I drive by it all the time great How- beer too really okay it's Yakima Crafts tasting room yeah. Okay. And good food. Very cool. Mm-hmm. That Second Street Grill is is good food too. If you ever get a chance yeah. to eat, that's one of the nicer oh, we restaurants have, in Krakama. We have the bruschetta. Yeah. yeah, nice. We got to order that there. They have those. Uh, me and my wife get those too. What are they? They're like a like a roll with. Oh God, I can't think of it either. Pot stickers or something. Yes, 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 yes. They have some kind of special pot stickers on the menu or something. And she gets those. They're really good. They don't have a huge menu. What they do, do they do good? You have any idea what you're talking about? I think so. Did you say doo doo? <laughs> I may have. He did. Yeah. Um, cool. Tap room. So where'd you go after that? Back home or what? Yeah, we. I had to go run an errand or two. I had to get a battery for my fob for my bike. Mm. Mm. And, and then, then he, and then he found his fob. Yeah, because I my, my backup fob battery was dead. I couldn't. I misplaced my keys. What but. kind of battery is that in that thing? It's a I've never changed watch one Watch battery. Okay. Yeah. Just one of those like little round CR. Yeah, CR. One, two, three What's things. What's the number? Yeah. 3023. Hey, let me tell you about LED's truck. Yeah, please he do. He hit the brakes hard and then he found his fob. Yeah, slid <laughs> really? out. Really? What does that tell you? Yeah. Or is that a true story? Yeah. Oh my God. They, I hit the brakes. They slid out from under the center console. I go, shit, I've been looking for those for a week. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Anybody else able, this is the thing, is why it's hard to get podcasts together. We do. We make it happen, but they're at odd times like this because 
you saw, you called and we put it out on our group me, all the lab guys. And so you ended up with LD and I, did anybody else, were they able to make it? Jake said maybe, but never uh, materialized. Jake Justice. That's it's, one failure for Jake Justice. Yeah. No, but he- But Buddy's here. Buddy the studio dog. Yeah, Greg, first thing he asked for when he got in the studio, where's Buddy the studio dog? I brought him up. But there you go, Greg. That, and that's what I mean. You know, everybody would have absolutely made it and we were group me and Jake was the only one besides us two that could even possibly make it work. Everybody else is working, you know, nights and uh, oh, Lurch yeah. is over on the west side of the state. I know. Right now. Yeah. So at least we got a couple for you, brother, but sorry, it couldn't be a bigger crew. Yeah. Hey. There's, these jobs. I got LD. Right. Yeah. Hell? Well, that's all best you need. Best of the best, baby. Best of the, yeah, we brought the best of the best. <laughs> and LD is awesome at this stuff. He, uh, he, he's so hospitable and stuff. And so it's a uh, great when, you know, if, if guys are coming through town and stuff. So, all right. So what to tell us about this motorcycle trip, brother, tell us about this. What, where are you riding? Where are you coming from? What's your plan? What are you, what are you doing? Well, I, I told you I retired on mm -hmm. uh, March 23rd. So I told my daughter I was going to be up to Walla Walla, spend some time with the grandkids. Now that I have plenty of time, my wife said, mm -hmm, go for it. So, so that's what you call this girl in Walla Walla? Your, is that what you tell your wife? Daughter? <laughs> <laughs> He's just looking at me like, <laughs> we're going off punch we're me. way off the okay, track. Okay, never mind, Greg. Can, 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 now my wife's going to hear this podcast. So you're, you're, <laughs> Luckily, she knows me and I'm full yeah. of shit. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, good. Um, yeah. So go on. You may see so you legitimately, yes, met your daughter in Walla Walla. Yeah, I saw it on right. Facebook. Yeah. So I've, Loaded up the gold wing uh, with the Baron Essentials and uh, headed on up there. When it was took me what, three days to get up there and a little over, oh, almost a thousand miles. Okay, so yeah. three days, a thousand miles. So you're taking your time. I mean, that's good riding, but you're not like just iron. I'm not in a hurry. You're sightseeing while you're doing it. I am. Retired. You're not a destination rider like LD. Okay, Back. I never will be a destination <laughs> rider. Really? Because because the law dog is per per Jeff. I know. Law dog is a destination <laughs> certified <laughs> certified uh, <laughs> destination writer. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Um, Try so, to imagine a world without destination cell phones. Writers. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That, <laughs> oh, destination. That's good. See, that Greg remembers the older episodes. That's great. We, we had a conversation about that one today. Jeff has not been back to the studio, <laughs> and I'll I'll gladly him. have him. He literally does not want to get back. He's petrified to get back on a microphone. <laughs> Could have been our fault. Not sure. He's the one that drank all the whiskey, though. Well, he does still catch shit about that was two years ago. <laughs> Look at Greg's giving him shit about it. <laughs> uh, uh, just for the record, no, I'm not, Sarge. I'm not giving you <laughs> shit. Uh, so three, that's awesome. Three days, thousand miles. You make it to Walla Walla. What's your purpose of this whole trip? Is it just some free time and traveling and family or what? Or what? No, I, I haven't spent any quality time with my grandkids for years. So it's like I just spent a solid week with no agenda, you know, with the grandkids and having a great time with them. What uh, What's the weather been like coming up? Do you hit any bad, bad stuff? It was really windy once I got uh, above Sacramento and it was windy all the way through Walla Walla and it was windy coming here today but you know what i got a gold wing yeah hell yeah it weighs half a ton so. right <laughs> <laughs> it's not a problem yeah and you've had that thing for a while now uh i don't care uh but what what uh i don't care i don't care i don't care i got that somewhere too <laughs> um well, why'd you take the uh gold wing instead of the street glide special for the audience i don't care <laughs> all right moving yeah. on um no would yeah. you ser seriously why uh why the Goldwing, they're great bikes, nothing wrong well, with them. Uh, I've got a 96, like I told you, and um, when they came out with the 1800, it actually has less uh, luggage capacity. So I like to throw everything in gotcha. I might need, you know, and then go on down the road and don't worry about it. You take any long rides on that Street Glide Special? Uh, just mainly to the coast and back, which okay. is about... Uh, Mm, 300 miles round trip okay i was just wondering if you go on a long trip on that you can make up for it with like a tea bag on the back or something but yeah it sounds like you usually grab the gold wing when you're going long long yeah is that fair to say yeah because the ride is it's really nice nothing wrong with that buddy um and so walla walla and then how long did you spend in there before you came a week busting a week spent a week with the grandkids yeah. okay 
and then busted through to old law-abiding biker territory here. And yep. uh, yeah, it only took a little over two hours, and I was bothering LD right at his door. That's a fun little ride from Walla Walla to here, huh? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah, uh, especially right. when you can hit. Yeah, depending on which route you take. You remember you come you come through Pasco and Tri Cities and all that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I took the interstate. And and see the thing is your interstates up here yeah are gorgeous yeah I mean to compared to California you're right yeah. are you are they better like because uh, we were you know we rode in California but we obviously don't ride as much as you down there are the roads like the better paved and stuff is that why or what or just because they're more open more open more scenery up here yeah the pavement uh, there's parts where it was kind of tough here. Um, cool. Do you stop anywhere on the way here? Like cool, like from Walla Walla, Yakima. Oh no, didn't didn't I do didn't, much sightseeing. Didn't no. Straight didn't. through to LD. Yeah. Mm hmm. All right. Cool. Cool. Um. So, what where are you going after this? What's your plan? I mean, are you? I don't know. I'm retired. You, uh, nice. Yeah. It's a hard concept L for us. LD. It is. Con it is. LD said he was looking for a nanny. So I'm thinking, huh? Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> tell us about this greg <laughs> we oh because we never got to do this did you hear this at the beginning ld ring ding, 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 I've, ding, I've heard that that's greg gaxiola's version of a two-stroke yeah and he sent that to me so i had to play that at the at yeah. the opener right that's yeah first bike can you do it live for us greg uh <laughs> <laughs> i'm putting him on the spot dude straight up Ring, ding, 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 ring, ding, <laughs> so ding, 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 ding. There's a this is when he was riding the neighbor's bike or whatever, right? Yeah, when yes. You, when you were a kid, yeah, right? yeah, 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 right, right, riding yeah. a little two stroke around. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So we had to get that, and that's awesome. All right, so you you honestly, seriously, don't know where you're going after. I mean, how? Oh yeah, um, you, from, does your, from, what, from here I'm going to Bend. And then from Bend to Granada, or no, Grenada, California. And then it's straight through home because I've got an Elks initiation i got to meet on Thursday. An Elks initiation? Yeah, they're going to initiate me in the Elks. They get you sexed you in or? <laughs> <laughs> How does that work? It's a private club. You can't really talk about it. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, kind of like the island. Can't talk yeah, about that we'll either. Just, we'll just say he's probably going to be riding his bike sitting down for about a week. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say you don't know what they do with those antlers. <laughs> right. Wild, wild. Don't worry about that. That happens all the time. The old coaster sticks to the bottom of the glass. <laughs> Greg's, you? Greg's breaking shit. <laughs> just Greg's, Greg's breaking the studio, yeah, guys. Yeah. I'm straight up breaking the studio right now. Um, all right, let's do this. So Greg's a patron. I think you guys, I think it's time to, to uh, thank the people that made this very episode possible. What do you guys think about that? I think you should. Greg, why don't you uh, go for it right there, right here. You can name those guys. Jason Schott of uh, Cobalt, Texas. Top tier. Mm -hmm. Paul Harnett of Sterling, Alabama. Just did an interview with Paul Harnett. He's going to be on soon. Josh Boyles of uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Another top tier. Uh, Gary Joseph of Beaver Creek, Ohio. Robbie Tidwell of Nixon, Alabama, top tier. David, oh shit. Guthel, Guthel yeah. of Whitting, New Jersey, top tier. David, sorry about that if I screwed your name up real bad. Everybody's used to us just mutilating names by now. Oh, yeah. I know I've done a few. That is right, guys. They took action. Lawbidingbiker.com forward slash Patreon. They want to make sure that this platform keeps moving forward. They help put a little fuel in the law abiding biker gas tank so we can keep this thing heading on down the road for you guys. That's right, guys. Lawbidingbiker.com forward slash Patreon. And with that, I want to ask you, Greg, you've been involved. Tell us your thoughts um, about this private Facebook group, patron only private Facebook group and where it started and kind of your, cause I, I don't get to ask other people. I mean, I know what it's become and you've heard my opinions on the podcast, but what do you uh, tell the audience about this private Facebook group and what's going on in there? You're pretty involved in there. Right. Um, well, um, it's for the Patreons only, correct? Mm, that is correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Private. Yeah. If you pledge a certain amount. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm in it. Yes. 
All the lab crew is, yes, right. correct, and patrons, yes. Exactly. And uh, it's an extremely valuable uh, asset for anybody who is a Patreon because uh, you can ask any question you want about a motorcycle. doesn't make a difference what the motorcycle is, neither, and you'll get an answer. Yeah. yeah. And it's not like uh, the uh, forums where you get belittled sometimes, or, mm -hmm. you know, that crap. No, yes. you'll get an answer and you'll be taken in as a brother. Yeah. Well said. There are no stupid questions in there. No. And that's how it's treated. Um, we are there. You're right. That's a good point. Um, you know, a lot of those forums, uh, you know, you get made fun of or, or just there's some real jerks in there because it's not moderated well. Right. And they're really clunky. And so I honestly didn't think that this Facebook group would become that. I really didn't know what it would become. We were just trying new things, right. kind of like patrons. And and it worked and it has become. We have a lot of social involvement. There's a lot of people hooking up and going on rides like our North folks, Canadian folks. You see them, hey, right. I live in this area. And you start to see them make these connections and oh, they're yeah. now riding together and yeah. they met. Yeah. But on top of that, it's become that place um, where you can ask the stu You could ask, I can't start my bike right. and nobody's going to make fun of you. Right. I mean, we have fun. In a, in a nice way, but yeah. but they'll answer. Somebody will answer your question and not call you stupid, right. because we've got experience, different experience levels in there. Right. I just looked it up. There's 149 members. That's just and awesome. Yeah, that's 149 bike riders to answer your question that have been through the same type of things. Um, is might not be an answer from a lab crew member. It might be an answer from just some other guy that says, "Hey, yeah, that happened to me last year on my bike or whatever." Right. So that's kind of nice. It is, Robbie has seen it grow and he's made a comment before like i had no idea that yeah. it was going to become this and i didn't either um and it really and, and i've learned so much i i have the platform i don't claim to know everything about motorcycles these guys have taught me i scroll through that thing and i'm like wow that is amazing information and i say so in there and, and of course we're trying to be involved but it has become uh you know that search capability a lot of people forget about in facebook you can literally i've tried it because I know there's been conversations about it before and somebody asked the same question. I go back to the search bar in our Facebook group. I type, you know, plugs. Right. And and it comes up with every conversation and every thread that we've ever had. And we don't need to reinvent that discussion. Exactly. You know? Yep. So. And it's a great place to share your travels. Yes. We have had. And from all over the world. We have people in there from all over oh, yeah. the world. Yeah. Australia. And yes. Yep. Australia, Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And others. Awesome, man. Um, so you've seen that thing grow from the ground up, you know, oh, yeah. it started out pretty. Yeah. Now it's just the threads are amazing and I can't get through them all. But uh, yeah, like you say, other bikers in there helping bikers and, and uh, not afraid to step up to the plate at all. So yeah. Great, great, great. How, now, did I ask you, I forget you're staying with Robbie tonight and you're leaving tomorrow. You are leaving tomorrow. And that's when you're headed straight to Bend. Yeah, we're going to have uh, breakfast, I think. Yeah, yep. breakfast, that's the plan. Because you're off, so. Yeah. yeah, I'm off. I don't go back till Friday night shift. Roger. You had your bike in the shop, dude. I saw it down. I was in. Yeah. Yeah, I texted you about this. Right. Yeah. You don't remember? No. The amp was overheating that's in the right. stereo. And it's a warranty item. Yeah, it was under the extended, so I paid $54. They put a new stereo in. Okay. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah, and because it's funny because I was down at our local Harley Davidson dealership, and it's so funny because I'm in there talking to the mechanic guys because I know them, and I'm just BSing them. I was actually stopped by; I was on duty, and I'm just BSing. Them, like, hey, the frick? That's Robbie's bike, dude. Because I know your bike, you know. <laughs> and uh, I asked, and they're like, I don't know what we're doing to it. You know how they just cert Paul takes them in, and then right. and uh, and so I had to text you. That's right, and that, the reason it's there is because that's a warranty item. Well, right. yeah, I, I wasn't gonna do it myself and cost myself five hundred dollars stereo. So correct for fifty dollars. Yes. They did all the work and came back with new stereo. Yeah, that's awesome, so, man. Yeah, it worked out pretty good. That's awesome. Hey, uh, Greg, why don't you talk? I was interested in this subject. Is there anything about your other, before I move to that subject, is there anything else about your trip that you want to tell us? Oh. <laughs> no. What do you mean? I don't know. No, I, I'm not actually. I'm just oh. being serious. Uh, oh. I know that seemed like a fishing expedition right there. But it, it, the, <laughs> well, um, uh, what does he know? What yeah, does he know? He was, he, he, I saw it in his eyes, dude. He was like, uh, "What do you know that I do not know?" How did you know that? <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> right. Yeah. Hey, did you guys go through? Uh, speaking of, before we move on, so you, 
we all live on the outskirts of Yakima itself. Um, uh, Yakima, we only say that because it's the main city um, around here, the largest in this particular part. But did you guys go through any other parts of Yakima or just the downtown Yakima Ave area there? We did end up over at Best Buy. So south. And then we ran out to Little Brown after Best Buy. So you were down next to the Union Gap? Yeah, and Costco. And we drove by Costco and Lowe's and that stuff. Dude, you should have taken... You should have taken Greg through oh, the hood, dude. No, no, no. We through did. Our no, hoods. no, we did. We did. did we you? did. We and went, show him all the mentals up on North First Street. No, and stuff, no, no. Dude. We didn't go there. And the hookers. We went down. Uh, he probably to flag one down. Go ahead. Deal? Okay. <laughs> not, I, not saying where you work, but what's up with the freaking homeless camp behind the old Greyhound? That's called Tent City, bro. Yeah. Greg goes. Called Tent they City. They just allow that? I go, I don't know. I've never seen it because I don't usually oh. go down that far on that road. I'm usually over on Walnut. Yeah. I was like, what the hell? I was just thinking of alternate places to stay besides LDs. <laughs> that guy looks kind of cute. He's got two wall- teeth. Uh. <laughs> that tent's real nice. <laughs> she looks like she might be a little lonely. <laughs> That's at least a three-person tent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, dude. He probably, yeah, get a tent at Walmart. I need to go to Walmart and get a tent. I'm yeah. setting up in tent city. Yeah, that was, I, I hadn't seen that. Dude, you're going to get me on a tangent. Okay, um, we can stop now. No, want. no, it's a good tangent. Okay, go I'm not going to go deep with it, but that is the number one issue that has reared its head in the city limits of Yakima is homelessness. Um, I'm going to keep this very short. Yeah. Uh, but it uh, Tent City came up because um, because and so Codes is working on that. They're basically what they're doing for the audience is they're putting tents up on city property in between the street and the sidewalk and the grassy. Well, apparently city codes and legal is working on it and there's no authority to kick them out at this point because it's technically city. Dude, I don't understand it all. It's an easement. Yes, it's an easement. Now other cities have done it, but you know, there, that takes time. There's got to be all kinds of ordinances and crap. I don't get involved in it, but yes, it is absolutely atrocious. And there's like a hundred calls a day. In those areas. Yeah, and it's a block from your convention center. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, it's it. I'll just tell you it's a hot topic issue in city government um, with that right now. So, well, good. I'm glad you got. Uh, yeah, we'll uh, do North First Street on our way out of here. I would <laughs> we'll, like. We'll go through Sela and then we'll go right down North First to Knob Hill. That's what you need to do. Yep. Take them up. Yep. Uh, yep. On North yep. First Street, bro, and let them got see another, the zombie uh, land. Got another exciting adventure set up for you here, Greg, on the uh, way home tonight. Nice, right. dude. We're not taking them to the nice parts. In, in, yeah, come on, dude. We're taking them in, oh, the, yeah. in the ghetto areas, dude. We really want you to have an experience, Greg. <laughs> Are you armed? I am. We're good. I would be armed if I were you. Yeah. Can he borrow a gun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll lend you a gun for the day. <laughs> um, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, North First Street. That would be good, man. Oh, all right. So, um, let's see. Let's move on to California because we have a little bit different rules up here when it comes to laden splitting. In fact, you can't do it up here. Right. And you've heard us talk about it in in past podcasts, but I've never talked to you about it. What's your uh, take on lane splitting? Number one and number two. Do you practice it down there? Number three, just uh, just spit spit uh, at us your thoughts uh, to the lane- community. Yeah, I lane split every chance I get, especially at uh, signals. And I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. It's called filtering. So you move to the front of the line, and you get all the cagers pissed off. Oh, well, (laughs) sorry about that. I get to be first. I'm on a motorcycle. I like your thinking. Yeah, I'm down with that. I'm down with that. Yeah. But the major reason I do it is because I, I worry about people in their cars texting and not paying attention to what the burp is going on. Mm-mm. Okay. Yes. He's yeah. pretty good on the beeps. He is a beep. Yeah, that was good. Then, I'm then, impressed. Then, that was good. I don't even need a fucking soundboard. It's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? This is great. <laughs> no, I, I watched a guy in Hanford get rear ended by some gal who was texting and knocked over this guy who was about my age. Okay. And I'm not ready to die. I just retired. Well, you lived a good life. 80s, a good life. <laughs> <laughs> One for me. Uh, here it goes. One for me. Yeah. Right. You're right. two now, I think. <laughs> I'm at home now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but, go on. Yeah, that's the reason I do it. I filter. I go to the front of the line at, at uh, red lights. So do you think it, um, with that said, mm-hmm. do you think that it's a beneficial law and do you think it be, should be 
promoted in all states. Oh, absolutely. For the pure safety issue or for the fact that you just like to piss cagers off? <laughs> well, number one. <laughs> what's your motivating factor? Yeah, what's your, be honest. I, I love to piss cagers off. <laughs> <laughs> they look at me like with envy. Yes. <laughs> Are they getting eat? I mean, seriously, but is it a, uh, I know there's the overheating issue. I think it should be legal with, yeah. with, with, requirements right. of like we let's not do it when everybody's already doing 80 yeah. i mean rob like would like to do that yeah, anyways probably. but but probably 90 but, maybe yeah, 90 right yeah. you know i just think there seem to need to be something limitations let's on like let's not be line. stupid you yeah. know the layman line the yeah. layman yes exactly you've seen him <laughs> you've seen him if you've you wonder what that is uh <laughs> rob is over there hitting his glasses on the microphone oh is it hitting them sorry yeah, that's all right no. you wonder what that sound is but do you think it's a, is a safety on a serious note? Uh, is it a safety issue for bikers? Do you think? I, I think it actually promotes safety for bikers. I agree. Yep. I agree. And for the, the rear end factor, number one, right? The rear end factor, number one. And also you're on a motorcycle. You're on a crowded freeway. Why can't you ride between the cages? Right. There's no reason. Right. As long as you do it safely. Yeah, right. And that's the key because we see a lot of videos. They're just cluttered on YouTube and it's just, it's, it's getting old, you know, of all these sports bikes and oh, yeah. they're doing, they're doing it in a way that is just, it's getting people killed. You know what I mean? Cause there's no, cause you guys down there right now don't have a lot of control. It doesn't sound like it's a really vague, from my understanding, a really vague law. Correct. From what I understand, no, no uh, police officer is going to ticket you unless, unless you're doing something really outrageous. Right. And so what I mean, though, is that the law is vague. Do you, uh, it's okay. Do you know what the, what I've heard is it's basically you can, there's no real limits on it. It's very vague about motorcycles can basically split lanes, but there's no like, hey, don't do it at 80 over. There's nothing like that. It's very left open to, uh, to discretion. Yep. Yep. It'll be interesting. I don't know if we're ever going to get it here. I do promote it for those reasons. I promote it and I think it should be with, with limitations because you, you always have to have some limitation or you get what we see on YouTube. Yeah. You know what Californians, I mean? Californians, you're not supposed to be doing 10 to 15 miles per hour above what the flow of traffic is doing. Okay. So in parts of LA, that's zero miles per hour. And so that means you should be doing 10 to 15 miles per hour splitting those freeway lanes. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, and I can definitely see it in that crowded traffic, you know, and, and then we have the bike. A lot of people talk about that, the bike overheat issues with the air cooled, you know, that's not necessarily a safety issue, but it's certainly an issue that people bring up and stuff like that. So, well, that's good. That's good to hear from you. You know, we've talked to Matt Pass about it down there um, yep. in California. He's on, you know, via Skype sometimes. And, and I always like to get your take on it. Do you think it's going away or, or is there any controversy on it down there still? I haven't heard of any. Okay. So. I mean, I've had a few people flip me off, but. Really? So cagers are still getting pissed about it, right? They don't like it. Really? And they're not used to it yet? And not all of them. Okay. Some of them. Yeah. I just wonder, you know, over time, if there's going to be a culture of more acceptance that people realize, but. It, what, I think for the most part in California, and you are accepted. If okay. You're, if you're lane splitting or filtering. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for the most part, I don't get any grief. Good. And see, I think that's just because you guys have had it down there for so long. I think it's just, yeah. if we do it up here, can you imagine that, Robbie? Uh, I think people here would be pissed at first. Yeah, like, it would be a mess. Because not everybody would know it's a new law. But, you know, you right. know, one of the reasons I do ride about five over is so that I'm not stuck in traffic, blind spots, things like that. Absolutely. And if you Amen. can get out of traffic from the get-go at a red light, get through the traffic, get to the front, and then you can... You know, your bike's going to accelerate faster in the car unless they're really, Oh yeah. you know, so you can get out away from traffic. I think that's safer. I don't know why they wouldn't do something like that. Right. I mean, I can safer. see not doing it when traffic's moving, but if traffic stopped at a stoplight, there's no reason you shouldn't fish your way to the front. At minimum, that should be the law. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Snake, I, snake your way up to the front at stop when yeah. vehicles are stopped. That way no one's changing lanes into you or anything like that. Cause that's what would make me nervous about doing it going down the freeway. But right, right. No, that, well said. I'm glad you spoke up on that. Yeah, no, I agree, man. Yeah, at minimum, Washington just needs to make a law that says you can at least do it when it's st stop and go traffic, you know, because um, that's where it's really beneficial. And the rear ends are huge. And if we can avoid those and cut in between cars, 
I would like to see it even go a little bit beyond that, but that would be a good starting point. You know, it was only recently, speaking of those laws, and you guys, you may be familiar with this, Greg, is it was only, God, I think like four or five years ago that they finally changed the law here to allow motorcycles because we don't trip the lights, the traffic lights a lot of times. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you may, where you live, I don't know, you may have enough traffic, but we don't at certain times of day. And if it cycles once around with Mm -hmm. safety, you know, with making sure that it's clear, you can run the red light because it's been around one complete cycle back to you. Um, And that was fairly recent, which is interesting. Year and a half, last year and a half. Was it that, that recent? It may have been. Yeah, it wasn't very long ago. You're right. And so we seem to, you know, California is definitely ahead of us up here um, on that note. So um, speaking of, have you ever, uh, not speaking of, but moving on from that real quick, have you ever ridden in Washington before up here a no, lot? Oh, no. really? This is first time. So first time. Mm-hmm. So at least you got to see some of Eastern Washington, mm-hmm. which is cool. And some yep. of Central Washington, right. um, but n- not hitting the West side. You're going bend instead of the 101 down right or you're gonna yeah. you aren't no. gonna bust over on 101 from bend or anything no, i'm going back to bend because they have a whiskey bar there yeah yeah sweet he, yeah he really enjoyed the whiskey bar he was telling me about it yeah he said how much was the there was a glass of whiskey right yeah for how much again not the one you as, had but no the, not the one i had as much as 147 dollars a glass holy yeah. shit <laughs> that's what i said <laughs> like holy shit wow what's the name of that just stills stills yeah wow i've never been whiskey bar and ben dude i gotta go not to buy that one but i'd like to go to a whiskey bar with you i enjoy my whiskey ask for caroline really he's a local dude he's like norm from cheers norm he's gonna walk in there tomorrow they're gonna just start (laughs) serving up his shit he didn't have to ask (laughs) Oh, Greg's back. They're <laughs> calling his phone on his Goldwing about when he's 50 miles out. I'm 50 miles out, oh, bitches. Yeah. <laughs> Get it on ice. <laughs> Set him up. He, uh, he had something he said it was about $15 a glass. He said it was great. Yeah. Oh, I would like to try that. Yeah. yeah. Glen Mirage. I've been to a tequila bar when I was down in California. I don't remember where it was. It was over by the Bay Area somewhere, but um, never at a whiskey bar. I went yeah. to an Irish bar in San Francisco. Did what? I go with you? Yeah. When, we went, when they were cleaning the streets, remember? Oh, yeah. Uh, it was big enough for about 10 people, and there was 30 in there. That's right. That's yeah. right. We did. Yeah. We did. I was drunk. Was it, was <laughs> no. It, what, what? How many? It was this little tiny bar. And, and there, you it said was, 13 to 15? Oh, yeah. I didn't hold very many people. Uh, nuts to butts. Yeah. There was uh, like triple the amount of people that probably should have been in there. Fire code people would have been all over it. Just shut it down. Hey, let's do this real quick, and then we'll wind down here. Let's thank a couple, because we love our patrons, of course. We've got a patron sitting right here on the very sofa, Greg, that you helped pay for. Patrons, because our old sofa was ghetto. And we've we've taken Skinny t- Oscar broke it. Skinny Oscar broke <laughs> Yeah. You know what? Uh, he did. He, he <laughs> yeah. frickin' broke the frame. I had to screw it back together. And uh, we have really slow. And here's the thing. I'm still a cheapskate and I, cause we got to keep funds aside, like the website broke. So I had emergency funds for that and everybody helped with that. But I still went to Ikea and got that damn sofa. I didn't buy something <laughs> high end. Yeah, I went the- to freaking Ikea. I drove to Seattle and bought or Portland cause we had to go there for a dance competition for my daughter. And I ended up buying this at Ikea. This is straight out of a psychologist office. It, it, is it, how does it feel? Is your back hurt yet? No, <laughs> no, it's not, not, bad. Bad. not bad. Comfortable. It is. It is for podcasting. It works really great. So uh, that's right, guys. These folks also took action. They went to lawbuddingbiker.com forward slash donate. They left a flat donation. We never balk at a flat donation if that's how you want to support us. And why don't you go ahead, Greg, since we got you in the studio, and thank some of these folks. Uh, Michael Baldonado. Baldonado. Of Deming. Deming, New Mexico, New I believe. Mexico. He's been drinking whiskey since my yeah. house. I, I, maybe, yeah. I should, maybe I should handle this for him. Oh, jeez. Yeah, you should probably go. Patrons aren't allowed to go to Rob's house anymore. <laughs> All right. Michael Baldonado at Deming, New Mexico. He asked a question on the contact form and made a donation. 
Cascade. Our, sorry, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Cascade Climbs of Camas, Washington. Is that a event or something? Uh, no, no, uh, that's a, a business. So they oh, donated okay. under a business name. I, I have Perfect. to look them up. Made a donation, and so Cascade Climbs of Camas. Thank you. If anybody's in the Camas, Washington area, yeah, go hit them up. I don't know what they do exactly, but probably something bike related. And then uh, Preston Sunday of Owasso, Oklahoma. He sent a message. He says, excellent video in the same Vance and Hines Pro Pipe that I have been researching for my 2016 FLH TK. Everything I wanted to know, imagine that. That's awesome, huh? That's right. Wow. That's right. Do you, do you clap at home when you listen to us, Greg, when we do something like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially when I'm drinking whiskey. <laughs> oh, that's freaking awesome, dude. That is right, you that's right, you mm-hmm. mowing the lawn right now on your tractor. That's right. Pull over. Pull over at lawbindingbiker.com slash donate. You walking your dog. You know who you are. Just do it right now. How about that for timing with the song? That's how I roll. All right. So uh, really good. Really good. Greg, do you have anything before we take? You know, I want to say about North Bend. I had a thought on that. That is a, we were, t- believe it or not, I was sitting in the uh, break room today at work. And uh, we're talking, somebody else is going to North Bend. That is a thriving, it is growing quickly. I don't know how much you've seen it over the years. It is, isn't it? There is 28 breweries. Bend, Oregon. Bend, Oregon. More uh, more per capita than any place in the United States, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I heard that too. And they have one whiskey bar that I really like. Yeah, I'm going to have to definitely. (laughs) God, I wish I was off tomorrow. I'd at least ride (laughs) North Bend with you and then come back. Um, dang it. Uh, yeah, it is. And it, it is growing like fast, like real estate wise. Oh yeah. It's a little city that's grown up. The interesting thing about Ben is, uh, is, uh, uh nothing wrong with it, but a lot of hippies, they got a pretty, pretty strong hippie. And I'm pretty sure Robbie, now that Greg's retired, you're probably going to end up in the hippie col- colony down there. He may never leave. He, and and, and right to right his now. lovely wife, who is lovely. Cause I see her on Facebook uh, I'm sorry if uh, Greg ends up not coming home and he ends up in a hippie. He's either going to end up in Tent City in Yakima or a hippie colony in, in freaking North Bend. <laughs> I'm leaning towards the uh, Tent City, at least for tonight. <laughs> or, or LD's uh, nanny, one of the two. Dude, if I go into work tomorrow, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. We, we better <laughs> Shit, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's freaking awesome. From what I can tell, Cascade Climbs is maybe like a climbing... Uh, that's what I thought. Yeah. So, uh, well, I, I haven't found a website that specifically says cascade climbs, but I've got like cascade climbers, rock climbing routes and photos, Southwest cascades, which is that area. That's what I'm thinking. They're so, like, yeah, uh, so the guy must, maybe he has a bike and, and he has correct. a climbing company, but anyway, shout out nonetheless, cascade climbs. Absolutely. Shout out. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people donate and their PayPal account is under their business, like right. law abiding biker and they end up donating, but they're obviously bike riders and listen to the podcast Perfect. um stuff like that um yeah that was really cool hey greg what else what else before we we before we shut this down you got the platform if you want to talk about anything else real quick you got to see the studio okay you got to spit a podcast you got to see the garage you got buddy the law abiding biker dog you're staying at robbie's house and it's just really uh went, awesome that went to my kids little league game oh did he that's yep. sweet yeah sweet that was fun give him yeah. a little more whiskey he'll get out there with a bat Get out of the way. Hey, oh, yeah. I was like, my, it was like bad news bears. I go, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's freaking sweet. But it was really cool that the first patron also is the first patron in the studio True. on a wow. mic. That's sweet. True. You know what I mean? Yep. I thought that was really cool. And that's yeah. why I was like, I got to make this happen. Yeah. And many more of them because uh, your podcast is growing in leaps and bounds from the comments that I've seen. On the Facebook pages and the comments on the videos and everything. Yeah, they're going places. So that's awesome. Yep. We're trying to hold it down for you, Greg, and you know better than anybody. Um, you know, now that you're here, obviously, too, it just, yeah, we're, it, you know, like I said, it was hard to even get just me and Robbie and, but, but we're making it happen. And I'm editing video like crazy. I told you we had a little conversation in the garage that I've been buried with my head you know, deep for three weeks trying to get caught up on video. And I got uh, Matt, you know, doing audio. And then we got um, uh, answering a lot of the emails. And then we got uh, Big Daddy right. running all the store yep. now. And yep. I couldn't. And yep. Robbie stepping up to the plate when a patron's coming in town. You know what I mean? Yep. 
these guys are the reason not, you know, right. I, 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 I tend to orchestrate a little bit, but I absolutely couldn't do it without these guys. So, yeah. And just for my little bit, uh, anybody listening, who's even considering or on the fence about becoming a Patreon, do it because it's, a, it's the best thing you're ever going to do. You're going to feel good about it. And, uh, you're going to make this thing go further on down the road. Like, uh, Lurge says, put a little gas in that uh, law-abiding biker gas tank. Yep. We can keep go the, wrong. Yeah. That's well said, and I appreciate that very much. And who knows where we'll go? You know, the patrons are keeping us going and building us, and we're going to keep it like it is for now. But, you know, maybe in the future, we might move patrons over to some exclusive website. You know, I, I don't know. Um, sky's the limit. But right now, we're just keeping afloat and treading water and and thank god recently um patrons like you and everybody else stepped up to the plate when the website broke and helped me get that fixed you know because that was a that was a good little expense i'm not gonna lie to you i i i got a lot of high-tech skills but that was crazy and uh we're not exactly sure what happened with that completely because they 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 can tell but we were getting a huge load on the website and that was due to a lot of things, but it was also due because the website's getting that popular. I mean, I look at the amount of hits that we are getting now. Um, YouTube channel, 3.2 million views now. Yeah. It, phenomenal. I never knew, and uh, I'm humble about it. I just yeah. really have to slap myself once in a while and and realize that uh, on those tired days that it's worth moving forward. And to meet patrons like you, you know, in the past and then have you in the studio um, is just, uh, the best part about it is, is I've always said from day one, you've heard me on the podcast is meeting bikers that I never uh, would have met and Rob and everybody else just meeting guys from around the world. That's right. my favorite yeah. part. It's just communi- connecting, yes. you know, and BSing with these guys. Yep. The community. You probably never knew you'd be on a, sitting on the sofa on an actual lab, law abiding biker microphone. Is that where I'm at? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pour him another one. We're good. Yep, we're we're going to get some more whiskey. <laughs> oh, that's and awesome. And now, you now you want, you're not asking what now, like you did when we got here. Why didn't you ride the bikes? Oh, See? yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, you guys did come over in the truck. Now I know why. Yeah, because yeah. Robbie's sober and he's got to give- uh, Diet Coke Not that here. you're drunk, but, but yeah, he's, he's been having a few whiskeys. He's doing the responsible thing and Robbie's going to give him a ride home, so- that's freaking sweet, dude. Is he gonna? Well, I hope um, he's gonna give me a ride home. He yeah. may not. I if not, know. the law-abiding biker couch is yours, <laughs> okay. and you wouldn't be the first one that slept me on it. Me and Buddy, we Big, can sleep up there. Yeah, okay. you, you can. Yep. Many a people have slept on the law-abiding biker uh, <laughs> couch. There's nothing wrong with that. So, yeah, been a pleasure. I think we should uh, think about taking this. That's the wrong song. See, you got me off track. I think we need to do get this one right together. here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, get my shit together. I'm telling you. Well, Greg, again, thanks. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Ride safe back on your uh, trip to California. Say hi yep. to your lovely wife. I hope Thank to meet you. her yep. um, in person someday. Yep. Janie. We will we'll say that again. Janie. Yes, Janie. And uh, perfect. all you patrons or you people thinking about becoming patrons, you'll definitely get to know Greg Gaxiola in the private Facebook group if you choose to get right in there. What should we do for a call to action? Oh, yeah, 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 guys. We already talked about the bug slide up front. Uh, Big Daddy's ready to ship it over there, guys. That's right. Don't forget, while you're over at the Law Abiding Biker Store, if you need a cell phone or GPS motorcycle mounting solution, the Biker Gripper is what is for you. The sexiest, sleekest, strongest cell phone and GPS motorcycle mount on the market. That's right. Mm, Use it to mount your cell phone, GPS devices, radar detectors, EFI tuners, and so much more tried and tested by the Law Abiding Biker crew. That's right. Believe in it so much, we stamped our logo on it well over a year ago. And it's also available exclusively in the Law Abiding Biker store right beside Bug Slide and some other stuff. Several different models, guys, of course. LawAbidingBiker.com forward slash Biker Gripper. Which one are you running, Greg? You running the uh, control mount? I can't remember. That's the one I want to get, yeah. Okay, we're going to hook okay. we're gonna hook Greg up because uh, for free, we're going to get uh, Greg a biker gripper he gets to choose and big daddy uh runs all that now he's got all the stock and uh yeah just let me know we'll uh get you which color whether chrome or black or whatever and we'll get that on the way for just totally at the uh whim coming in here and getting on a mic so that's awesome that's awesome 
All right, guys, don't forget Lab Podcast Hotline, phone number 509-731-3548. We'd love to hear from you. That's right. We may play it on a podcast if it's great content. Mm-hmm. Or leave an internet voicemail from anywhere in the world right from the microphone built into your computer. Lawabidingbiker.com forward slash voicemail. If you can't support us financially, we get it. Everybody's in a different place. You can at least for free rate us in iTunes or Stitcher Radio. Lawabidingbiker.com forward slash iTunes or forward slash Stitcher Radio. It helps bump us up in the rankings so more bikers around the world can find us and join this very thing that we call the Biker Revolution. Peace out. Well done, boys. Well done.